Mums, they're some of the most important people in our lives and don't they deserve a lot of love? And that's what this Talking Sanctuary video is about. Stay tuned. G'day everybody, it's Danny from Board Game Sanctuary and welcome to another episode of Talking Sanctuary where today we are going to be talking about board games and Mother's Day and what are some of the best board games to play with your mum this Mother's Day or any other time of the year in fact. When it comes to spending time with your mum on Mother's Day or finding a gift for that very special motherly figure in your life, a lot of people often go and get flowers or chocolates or go out for a nice meal. There are actually quite a few cool board games out there that are perfect for playing with your mum on Mother's Day and sharing that really lovely quality time with her. So before I start the list, I thought I might just introduce you to my mum and here is my mum here in this photo. So there's me, there's my mum and I am quite taller than her. I love my mum and you know I cherish her and adore her and we've been through a lot together and everyone's relationship with their mum is different and um, you know who that motherly figure is in your life. Showing an appreciation for I guess the good times and the strengths and the times that your mum has been there for you is really super important and the way I like to kind of show that with my mum is by having a really traditional Vietnamese meal. Uh, so this Mother's Day um, my mum and I are getting together and we're going to have traditional Vietnamese pancakes which are not the sweet version if you uh, know what Vietnamese pancakes are. They're called bên xèo. One of the things that I really want to do on Mother's Day and obviously it doesn't have to be Mother's Day to do this is to play board games with my mum and uh, one time my mum and I got out a game of King Domino and she just absolutely loved King Domino and just putting all the pieces together and solving the puzzle and to me that was a cherished experience because we were doing something together that didn't involve going out and spending a huge amount of money and it was a gift that we could uh, that I could give to my mum but also share with her uh, for the next you know three or four hours that we were spending together after like a really long lunch so this year uh, I thought it would be a great idea to put together a list of five cool games to play with your mum or just other people in general if you're here for that. If you're looking for a really simple game to play with your mum this Mother's Day then look no further because you need the luck of the Irish because this game, So Clover, is all about connecting words together and scoring the most points possible. This game comes with some really unique components. Four leaf clover boards with four nodules in them and word cards with holes in them. And these holes fit over the little nodules, like so. And then as the words fit into the nodules, they create pairs of words that are on the edge of the four leaf clover. So the way that So Clover works is that across the game, each player is gonna be drawing four of these hole shaped square cards and then placing them randomly on their clover board. The edges of the cards then create pairs of words and players need to come up with some clues or key words that help to connect those two edge words together. After everyone's finished, players will then randomly choose one of these extra hole cards and mix them together with their four existing ones. And then the other players have to try and piece the clover back together in the right way. And for every card they get right, they get a point. I just love this game because it is just a really cool way to start a conversation with your mum or anyone that you're playing with, but also just trying to see how they think and how they would interpret the two words and find words that glue those two words together. And that to me is incredibly satisfying when you can really nail all four words in the right spot on the first go. It just creates this really motivating factor in the game. The next time you go to the florist to buy a beautiful bunch of flowers for your mum, how about you also grab Floriferous as well, the best accompaniment to any floral arrangement. In Floriferous, players will be drafting cards from a garden where they'll be picking different species of flowers, different scoring methods to get the most victory points possible and arranging them in the most beautiful way possible too. In the game, players are going to be uh, picking cards, so there's floral cards of different colours with lots of different insects on them, 
and they'll also be picking um, and drafting different ways to score the cards that they've picked throughout the game. This is scoring all the different Bs that appear on your floral cards. This is giving you points at the end of the game for the different species of flowers that you've picked. The interesting element about this drafting experience is that all the cards are laid out in rows and columns and whichever card you pick will determine the picking order for the next turn and that really reshapes how you develop your strategy throughout the game. Do you pick the card at the top and know that it's not going to fit into your beautiful floral arrangement but then get the power to pick the first card on the following turn or do you pick one that's lower down that you really need and relinquish that power to pick first to another player there's a really cool branching decision that happens in Floriferous in fact it really makes the game bloom does your mum enjoy sewing? or maybe she really likes cats well the next board game is the perfect combination of the two it is a tile laying game called Calico, where players are sewing the most beautiful quilt patterns possible and also trying to meet the needs of some very temperamental kittens. So when you play a game of Calico, each player is going to grab one of these beautifully double recessed boards and they're incredibly thick if you can see. Each player is going to grab three objective tiles which they're going to place in the middle of their quilt and then players are going to ultimately try to satisfy those objective tiles by surrounding them with particular colours and patterns. The pattern tiles that are on the outside of your board also count to scoring as well. Players are also trying to fulfill these cat objectives and score as many points as they can. And there's all these really cool little buttons that you can sew into your quilt that makes your board look so colorful. I really like this game because at the beginning of the game, all of your choices remain super open. But as you get towards the end of the game, you're finding that the tiles that you're picking from the market and playing down are going to be more restrictive. This is a game where you're not going to do everything that you really want to do. It's a game about making the best of what you've got in your hand and the situation that you've established on your board. I love playing this game and this is a game I definitely want to introduce to my mum, mainly because I know that she loves sewing and I know she sewed a lot of my clothes uh, back when I was younger and I think she would just really love the theme of this game and the colourful nature. The next game is one that I've recently acquired into my collection and it's probably risen as one of my most favourite abstract games of all time and this is a game that I think would probably be a next level game from the games I've already introduced and it is Azul Queen's Garden. This version this version of the game is absolutely stunning. I just love the fact that in this game, the drafting method of the way you pick the tiles compared to the original Azul game is very different. You've got this really cool conveyor belt effect where the tiles slowly get revealed over time on these really cool garden discs. You can actually also acquire the garden discs as well to expand your garden. I love this because the tiles have a dual function. They've got colors and symbols on them and each of the symbols represents the number of victory points that you get if you group them together and you also get points for grouping colors together. This is a game where as you play it, your garden expands and it grows and it has a very satisfying, calming feeling. This is a game I would imagine playing with my mum whilst having a really cool cup of chamomile tea on a Sunday afternoon and maybe some scones and jam on the side. This is such a beautiful, warm game. Yeah, you get to collect tiles. Yes, you get to place them and then you get to score them and then you get to collect more. And the tactile nature of the resin hexagonal tiles in this game are absolutely high quality. Now, before I get to the final game, you might want to grab your favorite glass of wine because this game is the heaviest of the bunch, but definitely my favorite in terms of theme. And if your mum is someone who is an absolute fan of board games and has played a lot of other board games in the past, then I'm sure she will love this game if she hasn't played before. It is Viticulture. Viticulture Essential Edition is one of my most favorite worker placement games. It is a farming game about building your own vineyard, growing your own grapes, harvesting them, then crushing the grapes and turning them into wine and upgrading your winery and then you know, fulfilling orders to get victory points. And then you've got all these visitors, visitors that come over in summer and winter and give you all these really cool abilities. This is a beautifully produced game that, you know, it does take a while to play if you're playing with more than two, but it definitely still plays really well at two. So if it's just you and your mum playing or you and whoever, it still plays fantastically. And I just love the fact that you've got these little grande workers that can use a spot that someone else has taken up. 
This game is probably the most premium game, I would say, in this entire list. Don't be detracted by its really uh, low-key cover but the game itself is incredibly satisfying. So what did you think of my Mother's Day board game list? If you really enjoyed my list, please consider giving me a like and subscribing to this channel for more amazing board game content. If you wanna get some more behind the scenes uh, footage and news, head over to my Patreon page. Uh, what are some of your favorite board games that you'd like to play with your mum? Or with anybody else, in fact, or with your family? Please let me know by writing them in the comments section below. I'd love to uh, have a little chat with you and find out more. This is Danny Sanya. Thank you once again for joining me for another Board Game Sanctuary Talking Sanctuary vlog. And I hope your Mother's Day and your next board game experience is a beautiful one. See you later.